back to Spygate, back to the worst corruption scandal in American history. Judicial Watch has uncovered more documents showing, the, uh, showing previously undisclosed contacts between the Clinton spy operation head uh, Christopher Steele and the State Department, the Obama State Department. The, uh, we have filed a lawsuit with the, excuse me, let me get some water, the Daily uh, Caller News Foundation uh, for these documents at the State Department. We were suing for essentially communications uh, with the Obama State Department and um, Christopher Steele, his company, uh, and uh, we basically wanted to know what was up because we knew there was a nexus. There had been some public reports showing a nexus between Christopher Steele, the Clinton uh, spy, and uh, the Obama State Department. In fact, Jonathan Weiner, who is a friend of Christopher Steele, uh, confessed in a Washington Post op-ed that, yes, he communicated with Steele about the dossier, he helped write parts of it for him, and shared it with others. So it was a, another vehicle uh, to run this smear job against uh, Trump to get the spy operation going and to get the seditious coup conspiracy against him going. So these documents reveal, as the headline says, an extensive relationship between Steele and top Obama State Department officials. And it shows prior to the dossier that Steele sent at least, by my count, over 24 reports on Russia to, Chris, to, to this guy Jonathan Weiner, uh, Victoria Nuland, who was the top state official on Russia under uh, Kerry and other officials at the State Department, some of which it turned out had to be declassified in order to give them to us. And we only got them partially because there were material in there that was still redacted. 24 plus reports. You can see why Steele was well positioned when he came knocking in 2016 with his dirty dossier. Again, this is work that Judicial Watch is uncovering, not Congress, not the Justice Department, not the FBI, and the State Department only Fess this up after we sued. When did we sue? This is sued in April 2018. And it's now October. I don't know when we got the documents. Let's say we got the documents within the last month. I think it was the ninth production. So what happens is they give us these productions once every month or so. So it's the drip drip, the slow drip, the modified limited hangout of damaging information showing State Department involvement in the coup cabal targeting President Trump, the seditious criminal conspiracy, as I like to call it, targeting President Trump, all covered thanks to Judicial Watch. You know, Judicial Watch's previous document finds in this case had been extraordinary. They were talking about Russia and the Steele dossier. Uh, we confirmed with Bruce Orr. With Bruce Orr. Who's Bruce Orr? You may remember the Justice Department top official whose wife, Nellie Orr, also worked with Fusion GPS. And these discussions are going on after the election. They were targeting Trump after the election, trying to get some campaign finance garbage charge against him going, based on a left-wing Mother Jones magazine story. Judicial Watch found that. Joan Orr says in response, I hope we can get something going here. Boy, it doesn't sound like a, uh, a quiet, retiring DOJ official who's just doing his job. That's an activist, an anti-Trump activist. Or is involved in another scandal. Go on to our next lawsuit. So we found in these emails between Nellie Orr and Bruce Orr in other litigation that Nellie was deleting emails about Russia, it looks like. So we sued to get the background, figure out what was deleted.
Nellie Orr sent an email to her husband, Bruce Orr, in April 2016, advising Orr, I am deleting these emails now. Seemingly related to, quote, an analytical exchange involving the German embassy and Russia issues. Impact of Russia influence operations in Europe, PSYOPs info war. We don't know exactly what the emails were. That's why we sued. How is it that Judicial Watch is uncovering that Nellie Orr is deleting Russia emails? Wasn't she doing it at her husband's direction? Why was she involved in an interaction with the, State Depart with the Justice Department and the German Embassy on Russia issues while she's working for the Clinton campaign? I mean, this, is, this, is, this, is, this shows you the insanity of the way this town is working. We've, we asked for the emails, didn't get them, we sued, we found that she's deleting something, potentially improperly, potentially an obstruction of justice. No one is doing anything about it. We have to go and ask for that material again. We don't get the information and we have to sue again. And we're not suing the Obama Justice Department. We're fighting this Justice Department. Virtually everything important we know about what Bruce Orr was up to in terms of documents you can point to saying this is what he was doing, this is what he was doing, this is what he was doing, is as a result of Judicial Watch's litigation. Some of what we know is because of the intrepid work of some individual members of Congress, like Nunes, Jordan, Meadows, Gates, people like that, Grassley, Gowdy to a certain extent when he was there. But the actual underlying documents, Judicial Watch is getting them. We got the 302 reports, the FBI reports, detailing Orr's collusion with Fusion GPS to launder information improperly into the FBI and Justice Department. Her, her, his collusion with Nellie Orr, Christopher Steele, his wife Nellie Orr, giving them documents with Nellie Orr's Fusion GPS uh, material uh, denoted, uh, the uh, material denoting it's from Fusion GPS deleted to cover it up. All that's because of Judicial Watch. Judicial Watch found that Christopher Steele was paid by the FBI 11 times during the campaign while he was working for Hillary and the DNC. Did you know the spy targeting Trump during the campaign for Hillary Clinton and the DNC was also getting cash from the FBI? It was a joint operation. And I could go on and on about the disclosures that we uncovered, the FISA warrant applications we uncovered, the fact the courts had no hearings on the FISA fraudulent warrants, the details on Comey's criminal activity as it relates to President Trump's um, memos he wrote about discussions, and the coup's continuing. So we're doing all this work no help from justice and FBI. We just have to litigate it. And the Democrats think they're free and clear from their, for their criminal activities involving and targeting Trump. They're holding these fraudulent impeachment hearings. They're not even really impeachment hearings. I won't get into the, the Alice in Wonderland um, abuse there this week. And now breaking today is there, the, the, you've got the deep state attack on President Trump illegally leaking information about his communications allegedly with the Ukrainians. How dare President Trump suggest that the Ukrainians in investigate Joe Biden's son for criminal activity in Ukraine? How dare he say, let's investigate the corruption of the last administration? 
What's going on with the cover-up? How dare he? Meanwhile, the prior administration was involved in an international conspiracy using the United Kingdom, Italy, Germany maybe, Australia, to target, on him, to target him and spy on him. The deep state is trying to overthrow this president, and if they can't do that, they want to handcuff him. So that if he speaks to a foreign leader, anything he says will, can and will be used against him, however unfairly. They're trying to hijack our nation's foreign policy, folks. The Judicial Watch is the only one trying to figure out what's going on in terms of the criminality. Oh, I know. U.S. Attorney Durham's doing it, right? I don't know. If he's doing a criminal investigation, it's one of the best kept secrets in Washington. Because you can bet if the bad guys had to go before a grand jury, you'd know about it. I mean, the big noise is McCabe may be indicted for lying about something unrelated. Well, that was referred to the Justice Department in April last year. Still no indictment. Comey was referred for criminal prosecution. Indictment rejected. And I tell you, nothing's going to happen unless we get these documents out. That's why we sued for... Uh, what else did we sue for? We sued for um, the, one of the worst aspects of, of the deep state obstruction is uh, the FBI. The FBI has not changed its stripes one iota in terms of cooperation, in terms of respect for the rule of law under the Freedom of Information Act and transparency. As far as I'm concerned, James Comey may as well be running the FBI. They're covering up text messages. They don't want to return over text messages. They're protecting Andrew McCabe. They're protecting virtually everyone involved in this scandal by either refusing to turn over documents outright, slow walking the release of others. I've told you about Page Struck documents. Remember Lisa Page, Peter Struck? They don't want to turn over all those records. They, want their tr they have, a, what, 18,000 records or so? The numbers change depending on which day we ask them. And they only can produce them at a rate of 500 pages a month, which would put it out till 2021 till we get them all. And no, we wouldn't get them all in 2021 because they were, they're withholding material. So that's when the fight would begin about the material they withheld. So they're trying not only to stall this into the next administration, but effectively into the administration after the next administration. And again, we're doing the basic heavy lifting that no one else is doing. We sued for the records of the FBI agent who first circulated the, the dossier, supposedly. You probably haven't heard of him. Michael Gaeta, who was the legal attache for the FBI in Rome, and we sued for records about his communications, and I love, I love the terms we used in asking for a search of the documents, mentioning the terms Trump, Clinton, Republican, Democrat, and or conservatives, and other documents, including expense reports and other reporting by Gaeta to see what he was up to. Bruce Orr justified... that Christopher Steele met with him in Rome, Gaeta, in July of 2016 and gave him two reports. Gaeta reportedly was authorized by then Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Newland, State Department again, to meet with Steele at his office in London to receive reports from the dossier. The purpose of the London visit was clear. Steele was personally handling the first memo in his dossier, handing the first memo in his dossier to Gaeta for ultimate transmission back to the FBI and the State Department. For this visit, the FBI sought permission from the Office of Newland, the Assistant Secretary of State, 
for European and Eurasian affairs. Newland, who had been the recipient of many of Steele's reports already, as I told you, you didn't know that until I told you. No one knew that until we told you just now. Gave permission for the more formal meeting. On July 5th, 2016, Gaeta traveled to London from Rome and met with Steele at the offices of Steele's firm. You know, and typically when we ask for documents like this, they say, oh, it's covered by this exemption, you can't get it. You can get this document, but you can't get that document. Uh, or uh, we've got a lot of requests, you're going to have to wait in line. Here, they gave us a Glomar response. They refused to confirm or deny whether the records existed, which is extraordinary. They refuse to confirm or deny whether he has travel vouchers. I mean, this is an FBI that is out of control. And when I say a Glomar response, it's a, I think it's a 70s term. It, it was the CIA was being asked about a ship. I think it was called the USNS, I think it was the US Glomar. And the Glomar allegedly was a salvage ship that had been set up by the CIA through a front company to try to retrieve a sunken Russia sub. And a reporter got wind of it and asked for documents about it. And the CIA didn't want to confirm or deny it. To deny it would provide information and to confirm it would provide information to the bad guys. That was their thinking. And the court upheld that more or less. And so that case famously be, became known as the Glomar case. And so when we get a Glomar response, it's, the, it's, co, it's a shorthand version of saying, in FOIA nerd world, I'm a FOIA nerd, uh, that uh, it was a, they can't confirm or deny their documents take, uh, exist. So here we have a top a Justice Department official testifying about the meeting, okay? And he can't testify without permission of the Justice Department. And they are telling us documents about the meeting they can't confirm or deny to, uh, exist. The FBI has contempt for oversight and the rule of law. And it hasn't changed with Director Ray one iota. And so Judicial Watch once again is in court against the FBI trying to get this information. I mean, just the other day, uh, I told you last week, we had, um, I told you about the FBI's contacts with Steele, and they fired him. They were paying him, and then they fired him. And then they wanted to use him again by using Bruce Orr to, as a cutout. But the, the documents about, from the FBI about Steele stopped about the time Mueller was hired. And the FBI was taking a position, we can't get anything after the fact. And the court said, oh, yes, they can. And he gave them 60 days to search for records. And you know what the FBI had tried to pawn off on the court as an argument? They're trying to protect Steele's privacy. I'm telling you, it's like James Comey's running the FBI. Actually, you know, Comey was a bit more transparent than this, believe it or not. Unbelievable. I mean, along those lines, we have a lawsuit against both the Justice Department and the FBI for a key document, another lawsuit. I've, uh, Judicial Watch is on fire, folks. We filed six or seven lawsuits in the last 10 days on these issues. There's this big document, kind of one of the holy grail documents that have yet to be declassified and are wrongly being withheld as classified on the deep state spy against President Trump, the Obama gang spying on President Trump. It's called the electronic communication and it's the one document that initiated the counterintelligence investigation of President Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. And the way I interpret the discussion of this, it's hard to know because we don't know what the document is, is that there was electronic communication from one of our allies suggesting something was going on and they needed to investigate it. Hence the alleged opening of the counterintelligence investigation. Now, Nunes, as uh, Devin Nunes had looked at this 
document, and this is what he said about it. So it took us a long time to actually get this because they wouldn't even share it with Congress, the Deep State Justice Department and FBI. So it took us a long time to actually get this, and they still haven't gotten it fully unredacted. What were the original reasons for the counterintelligence investigation was started? Now this is really important to us because the counterintelligence investigation uses tools of our intelligence services that are not supposed to be used as an American citizens. So we wanted to know what intelligence actually led to this investigation. So what we found now after the investigators have reviewed it, this is the document we want, is that there was no intelligence. So this document's a fraud. It was used to justify, without foundation, spying on President Trump. And this FBI and Justice Department are withholding it from us. The FBI and the DOJ are still covering up, still covering up the Obama administration's corrupt spying on then-candidate Trump. And this document may be key to exposing Spygate. And it's being withheld. And this is why I encourage the President of the United States to directly involve himself in getting these documents declassified. Because Nunes has looked at this, and it, there's nothing in there that warrants classification. In politicized circumstances like this, and of course I don't want classified information, but if I thought it would truly needed to be classified, we wouldn't be fighting about it. We're not looking for times and locations of potential military operations in Afghanistan. We're asking about a political document created to target a presidential candidate in an unprecedented fashion. What was behind it? CIG looking at this? I don't know. I could tell you that you don't need an IG when you've got Judicial Watch. Don't you think?